In this video, we're going to focus here on how we can use a callback function on the y-axis and specifically here, adjust a tick based on a certain condition plus adding some extra text in the ticks, which is basically a value that we have from our chart here that we insert in here. So we're going to play around with this and explore how to use the callbacks on the y-axis and customize the tick based on that. In this video, we're going to focus on one of the viewers question, which is how to add a callback function in the y-axis on specific ticks in chart.js. So this question came from one of my other videos regarding to the chart.js tooltip callback or how to customize your tooltips with a callback. And this video, in this video here, uh, Gwari Argawal asked the following question. So a special thank you to Gwari. How can I use any variable declared above the options in callback function in chart.js so that I can display only specific ticks in the y-axis? So based on this question, it is clear that you have maybe certain variables in the options or above the options, and you want to grab them and put them in your y-axis here. So let's start and explore how we're going to do this. First things first. First, we're going to copy the code and you can find on this specific site, charges3.com and then getting started. Then in here, we have this chunk of code, we're going to copy all of this. And if you want to understand what this is, please check out this video here. It discusses the JavaScript related to this chunk of code. So in here, I'm just going to paste this in. And once I paste it in, I'm going to add up this title here. There we are, and we're done. Save that and refresh, and now we have a nice bar chart. So now it's working. And basically, what we want to do is the following we want to make sure that these y axis here are being adjusted. So we could do, for example, to pinpoint a specific y axis to change it if a certain condition is true. So we're going to do that one, and I can show you exactly how we could extract certain values outside the options. So he's referring here with the options. And he said above the options, referring to this here. So let's start and explore how to do this. To do this, what we do need is in chart.js 3.5, basically in chart.js.org. And this is the latest version, which is 3.5.0. And in here, we go to the axis here. You can click here on axis. And here's somewhere you'll find the command callback. And you will find it here specifically on the namespace related to the ticks. So this option scales scale id which is the y-axis because that was the specific question and then ticks this is the one and this namespace we want to get here the callback which is a function itself so we're going to grab this and then in here we want to make sure we have the right namespace options scales scale id will be y and then dot ticks so we have options scales y and then in here we can put a comma and let's say here ticks and then what we're going to do is we're going to put in here the callback. A very important note here. This callback is without S. Make sure you check the documentation if there is an S or without. Because for the tooltips, the callback uses it with an S. So this one is without the S. And then in here, we have here the function. This is a function. And we have here certain arguments. The arguments in here are default and are also specified if you go in here. You can see you return the string representation of the tick value as it should be displayed on the chart. See callback. So if I click on this, you can see these three here. This is the one that we're going to use. The value index ticks or specifically here you can see here as well as a sample here. Value index and values which is an array of the item itself. So you could use here ticks as well containing uh, the array containing all the ticks. Alright, so that's what we're going to do here. We'll say here value comma index and finally we could say values that's all right so we have the array and then once we have this if i save this right now it will be blank here basically what happens is the ticks are suddenly disappearing because the return value is absolutely zero let's say we here return and what we want to return is let's grab one of those so i'm going to show you the value semicolon and save this and if i refresh here now all right Let's see what's going on here. For some reason, it doesn't respond correctly. So we say here ticks. Let's double check here. 
What am I missing? Syntax error, unexpected token. Of course, do not do this. Do not use the colon on the return. Sorry, don't do that one. That's a mistake I tend to make quite often. But once we do this, we still get here the values. Nothing has changed, but basically our structure has changed because we did something here. You will see here the following. So if I say you console log, you will see here as well the value. And if you refresh here, it will grab the value, and you will see here it gets here two times. And basically, we have two. You could have two uh, y axes here on this side and on the other side. That's why we have them twice. But you can ignore one of them; it doesn't matter. Basically, we want to focus only on the single one, which is this one here on the left side, which is basically this part here. So this one here would not have any impact here; it doesn't matter at all. So what we could do here, because right now you can see here we have all these ticks, and it takes us this, these values right now. Let's put in here now instead of the value, the index, and then if I refresh, you can see here it starts at zero all up to nine, which is all correct because here basically an index of ten, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, or basically there are ten items in this array or ten elements. So if we would change this. You change it as well here. So in our case, what we wanted to do was the following. We want to grab something here and put it in there. To do this, the easiest way would be to make a constant. And we're going to say, let's say here something. Yes, what we're going to do here is I will just say here, uh, let's say here, uh, label or target. Target equals target achieved. So what will happen is basically this. I want, for example, if we hit here a certain uh, index, let's say number 7, which should be, if I'm not mistaken, 14, but we can double check that. If we see that one, we want to make sure that this, instead of number 14, change it into target achieved. So everything about 14, 14 and above, is basically a target that we achieved. So to do this, we need to work with the index here, but we need to make an if statement here as well. Basically, here an if statement, and if we can just grab here the index, if index equals strict, and then this will be uh, index seven. If this is true, at that moment we will return this value here. Well, what will be the value? Well, simply this constant here is target and if that's not true basically it shows this but here what we need to do here uh, what I would say you could do an else just put it in here or, and the reason I'm doing this here is because if you would don't do if you would not do that you will have twice the return so I want to make sure there's only a single return here so we save this now and refresh so as you can see here now we have pinpointed a specific y-axis here. We grab any of these items here. So this could be as well, because you could do it here as well. Officially, if you would like to get this, what you have to do here is a chart and everything, but would not recommend that. In this case, I would say just go and put in here a constant. This constant could be, let's say this data here. It would be an array. And here we just grab here. Oh, I'm not not allowed to give you data because we have your data as well. So let's say data two or data points. Grab this. We say this. And here, basically here, we're going to work with this. What are we going to return? We cannot return the data points, but we need to return here a specific item. So let's say here the following. I'm going to make this a object uh, or a template literals, and in here. Just so it's easier to read, so we're going to use this. We're going to grab here uh, the uh, the value, and we say once we have that, there's an end. And this is just basically what we're doing here is a other way of concatenation, which is cleaner than the standard uh, quotations here. Make sure this one here are back ticks, by the way. These are back ticks. Back ticks are just below your keyboard on the below the escape button. Escape key. So as you can see, these are different compared to the single quotation. So you do back ticks here. We can say here this, and we could say here. Uh, we can grab here the data points, but the data point is an array as well. Here 
would be a specific value or you can loop this true if certain some a certain item is true or you get the index here if i save this now and i realize that this will not be 100 percent accurate because we are not able to do it with the index here because the index here would be longer because there's 10 items here and we don't have 10 items so i don't i won't do this i'll just put in here a number seven and you can see here oh uh the data point here is undefined all right so let's see what's going on with this data point here so what i'm going to do is i'm going to grab this here put it in here refresh you can see here we have this data point and of course number seven doesn't exist here so that's why it's undefined so let's put this on number six once you do this refresh and then you can see here it's always number nine because here uh, this value which is the sixth index is number nine in value and that's basically the way how we can grab and extract values because this is just an array here we create this array here you can put it in here you can so play around with all of these data points easily you can make here a loop a for loop to loop through this as well if desire desired thank you for watching this video and i hope you enjoy it and if you enjoy this video you probably will enjoy this one as well and if you're interested in chart.js check out in the description box the link directing to my chart.js course where you can learn everything about chart.js and finally of course Make sure you subscribe to my channel.